Washington State, Mount Rainier delights tourists with its tranquil beauty. Its neighbor, Mount St. Helens, was another haven for tourists until it erupted in 1980, hurtling a plume of ash 12 miles into the sky and leveling trees for miles around. Violent mud flows ripped the sides of the volcano and carved out deep canyons as geologists watched in amazement. After the eruption of uh, 1980 and the subsequent uh, activity, up to 600 feet of strata were deposited. That's uh, volcanic ash strata. Then in one day, a mud flow generated by subsequent volcanic activity carved into those sediments a canyon system 1 40th the scale of the Grand Canyon. Now it cliffs 100 feet high. Uh, and the little stream that's down there today is a remnant of that, the major catastrophic mud flow that, that carved out that canyon system. Looking here at the Carmel Formation. Carmel Formation is a Jurassic formation. It's a complex formation, actually. Extremely widespread. Uh, runs from here clear up into Canada. Uh, probably at least 200,000 square miles of Carmel. We have deposition here on a scale that is completely different from anything that we see going on on the surface of the Earth at present. This rock represents one of the big puzzles in geology. These kinds of rocks, made up of ocean sediments, are by far the most common type of sedimentary rock there is. There's more ocean strata on the land than there is land strata on the land, and that's a problem. How did all this ocean sediment get all the way up here? The conventional wisdom says that the geological features of Australia form slowly and gradually over millions of years. That is not the case. Indeed, I'm convinced that the evidence is more consistent with what the Bible says about a global catastrophic flood in the recent past. Now this is not just a matter of faith. This is also a matter of studying the geological evidence. Uluru is an enigma. It's thought to be millions of years old and formed by gradual processes. But a closer look at the rock suggests it's much more recent and shaped by raging waters. The thickness of sandstone we see exposed in Uluru, or as rock itself is over two kilometers thickness of sand. Think of two kilometres thickness of sand being moved very rapidly, you're talking about global catastrophic flood conditions. The record in the Bible says that at the end of the flood, the, the valleys sank, the mountains rose. There were earth movements on a grand scale so that rock layers would have been tilted up. The retreating floodwaters would have then carved out the countryside. And in the case of Uluru, that monolith that's exposed at the earth's surface, it survived the ravages of that erosion and stood out today at the present land surface after the waters had fully retreated. 